Hello and welcome to Defence Line, our weekly show on defence, security and more. Serving and retired defence personnel have a litany of grievances which have remained unaddressed during successive governments. Some of these including allowing uh, serving soldiers to cast their vote at the place of posting appear innocuous, yet they have not been enforced. Similarly, there are long-standing issues relating to pay and allowances. How do the retired soldiers view these? This is what we discuss today with Brigadier Dr. S.D. Datta, a retired officer of the JAG branch and a practicing lawyer, Lieutenant General S.K. Bahari, former MGO and chairman of the Association of Ex-Servicemen Organizations, and Major General Satveer Singh, vice chairman of Ex-Servicemen Movement. Gentlemen, welcome to the discussion. But first, let us take a look at the various issues. It's been a long journey for the ex-servicemen, but their destination still eludes them. These armed forces veterans have a long list of demands which remain unfulfilled till now. Having faced betrayals in the past, the ex-servicemen have even returned their medals to the president. Though the union cabinet recently appeared to have agreed to their demands, but it failed to pacify the ex-servicemen. They continue to vent their ire against the government. Besides the issues of pay and allowances, the ex-servicemen have a plethora of demands. They have stood up for the cause of serving brethren, demanding right to vote and the place of posting. These defence veterans seek better health care for their fellow beings. The ex-servicemen are pushing for reservation in Rajya Sabha nominations. Distraught at their experiences with the armed forces tribunals, the ex-servicemen want greater teeth for these bodies. With general elections around the corner, the ex-servicemen are now planning to up their ante. Political parties may lend an ear this time, wonder if the assurances get translated into actions. We are in conversation with three senior retired military officers. Victor Datta, I'll start with you. The soldiers have a long list of uh, grievances. Uh, which out of these, in your opinion, is the most important, which requires urgent uh, attention? Sir, I would say it's uh, one rank, one pay, uh, pension, uh, uh, which is uh, being echoed time and again. Unfortunately, there have been a lot of promises being made by the politician, uh, right uh, <coughs> up to the uh, prime minister. And uh, despite all the assurance, assurances, no, nothing is uh, seeming to be happening on ground. And uh, as per the data available, a person, uh, a Jawan who retires today and okay. the Jawan who had retired some time back, there is a difference of pension as much as 50%. I know. The I think a couple of them have even um, uh, moved court also. Uh, yes, sir. And uh, General Sadhbir Singh, let me yeah. get you into the discussion. Yeah. Since parliament polls are due next year, I think one of the demands is that the soldiers be allowed to vote at the place of posting. Uh, what is the hitch? Why hasn't that happened? Right. Uh, cover first what my friend said. Okay. Bhagirat Datta, yes. One rank, one pension was the demand. Now, having gone through five years of protest movement in this country, across the country, everywhere, and going to every place, going even to the courts, and then courts giving in favor of the defense people, AFT is giving, but the just government does not even accept or implement it. Therefore, okay. I personally feel now the time has come to do something where the honor, dignity, and respect of a soldier, that he can live with this dignity in a democracy, therefore, the question which you have now asked me right. about the use of power of vote. Right. Now, this has been denied to a soldier for last 65 years. May, may but I believe uh, there is a Supreme Court order of 71, 1971 on this. Yes. So, uh, why is that not being implemented? You see, the fault lies with our election commission. Last five years, we have had three meetings with the chief election commissioner. The PR says, People's Representation Act says that anyone ordinary resident at a place of posting or any place can get vote done. Okay. Now here is a constituency which is being serviced by the MLA or the MP. Why should that constituency everyone? Here is some cantonments like we have over 60 cantonments having over 1 lakh votes. Now it means this, this particular constituency has not been represented by so many but people. But why are the various yes. uh, the candidates of uh, you know, various parliament seats are not demanding this? Uh, well, um, well, we have, we have gone to everybody and now we ask them to include that in the, all those who will not include will not get our votes. So we are asking all political parties, we have written to them and that as far as Supreme Court judgment concerned, there is AIR 2125 of 71, okay. which clearly says 
that it is that uh, vote to the serving soldiers cannot be denied. Right, I think Brigadier Datta wants to say something. Yes, Brigadier Datta. With, re with regard to the uh, one rank, one pension, I just wanted to add a uh, little okay, more. Okay. Uh, that uh, what the soldiers are demanding is not uh, the money. It is basically they demand justice and equity. And uh, uh, so there may be some confusion in, uh, you know, in the mind of uh, some people. It is not so. Now, it is their rightful uh, demand. And uh, otherwise also, it is so discriminatory and violating Article 14 of the Constitution also. Kavali, and they have a right. That's right. Just recently, a week back, two one members of parliament raised this issue that why one rank, one pension thing has not been given. Now, what the reply comes? How have they concocted and with mixed up with some other case altogether? What happened? There was a Rajya Sabha committee report which was submitted on 19 December 2011. Right. The government has not even decided. And now when this question was asked, what the reply is given is, yeah, some people have gone to the court. They have now won from there and gone to Supreme Court. The case is subjudice. Is this the reply from the minister? Right. I am no, shocked and surprised. No, General Singh, I get your point. Let me get uh, General Bari into the discussion. General Bari, let me first ask you about your organization. You are heading the alliance of ex-servicemen organizations. Now, how many organizations are a part of this alliance? Actually, there are approximately 300 organizations okay. in the country who have set up agendas for themselves in various fields. Somebody is looking after training of uh, uh, wives of soldiers. Somebody is looking after the health care. Somebody is looking after the pension requirements of people. So. We have said that, all right, you carry on with your individual agendas, whatever you wish to do. But for uh, activities that concern all of us, we should band together and join, uh, represent our case collectively to the government. Now, General Bari, uh, we are talking about the soldiers' right to vote at the place of posting. Uh, it is possible that this has not been implemented uh, because of sheer logistical problems. Do you there, think so? There are no logistical problems because the deputy commissioner of the district is supposed to do the registration under his uh, domain. We have even suggested that the station commander and a station staff officer could become the returning officer, electoral returning officer, okay. and do this job. We are willing to help. We are ready to set up the booths in the cantonment. So that they are not interfered with by anyone. But tell me, why haven't the service chiefs taken up this issue? No, this, ta this has, has been, been taken, taken up. up. Okay. And uh, some orders are on. Okay. But somewhere, the, whether the government or the political parties or the election commissioner, somewhere, but soldier is being denied. Why should we not have the right to vote? Then, and what are the place of posting? And then if it is used effectively, efficiently, I am sure I will live with dignity and respect. Right. I can, yes, I can, there is a design behind not letting the serviceman express his regret. I can tell you the, all the no, no, service. You, now you see a conspiracy theory there. Now, what Absolutely. is the design behind this? Uh, I have no idea if the Pakistan chief can vote in the last elections and two Marines can be spent on a special plane to by the Italian government to vote in the elections. Why not us in our own country? But you have the provision of a postal ballot. How is that different okay. from... Uh, no, I wish to quote one example. Okay. In last assembly election in Uttarakhand, there were 1,40,000 postal ballots. Only 25,000 reached. Where are the balance? So if 1,25,000 more postal ballots had arrived, or they would have voted at a place where they were posted, I think the results would have been different elsewhere. So why this is being done, this is a question to be asked to the government, to the political parties and but, the election. But, but tell me, uh, what kind of a uh, collective impact can the soldiers have as a body? Why not? If in a village, like happens, if the village panchayat decides I want a school, which party gives me school? And I'm sure if collectively all ex-servicemen and service people join together to demand what has been denied to them, their basic rights, their basic facilities, their basic equity, their basic sense of judgment, their respect. Their status? If How we, can we if humiliate? We were, yes, General Bari? If we were to give votes, say a contournment of having about a lack of people in it, right. families and them, they'll ask their MLA, why aren't you raising our problems of the servicemen? 
Why are we not getting equipment? So, properly? how many containers do we have in the okay. country? <laughs> okay. How many containers now, do we have in the we country? We have over 60 containments in the country, and we have over 250 military stations. And some of the military stations are also likely to become containments with over one lakh watt at each place. And with ex servicemen there, uh, well, we have carried out certain amount of uh, you know checks and balances. You will be surprised. Jammu, for example, okay. the gentleman who vote to total one polled only three lakhs twenty eight thousand votes. Okay. But if all votes of the ex servicemen together be of four lakhs eighty thousand, so you could be the deciding factor. Not the deciding the winning factor. Okay. We so could change the form of runners change up the to total a winner. Complex. Yeah. So our submissions are that while we are only asking for justice. We are seeing dignity. We, are we don't want our bodies to be cut and no action taken. We don't want somebody else to be at the borders and defense not responsible. We don't want tomorrow, uh, we put at the China border and China is not looked at. We don't want our strength to be strengthened. Military, strong military, strong security, strong right, nation. Right, uh, General Bari, let me move to another issue. I believe the ex-servicemen are also asking for some kind of reservation in the, in the nominations to the Rajya Sabha. Now, as of now, that only 12 people are nominated from the field of literature, science, art, and social service. So, how will the reservation for ex-servicemen help? Well, I would say the government has put in dumb people in the parliament who never attend the Rajya Sabha or ask a question in their tenure in the Rajya Sabha. So, the government doesn't want any questions to be asked from them. If the soldiers are there, reserve seats for them are there, they would be able to ask the, uh, the government the questions. They don't want the questions to be asked. So that's why the service people but are not... But suppose there was to be a reservation uh, uh, for the ex-servicemen. Uh, how will this reservation play out? Who would decide uh, who these two or three people should be? Well, let the government decide. As they're doing, there okay. is a process there for... There can be various methods to be done. Yeah. See, the point is, you asked for that it is the social service. Which can be a better social service than protecting the integrity and sovereignty of this nation? You can all do karkhana if your borders are protected. Brigadier Datta, with the formation of the Armed Forces Tribunal, a long-standing demand uh, of the services uh, was met. Sir. Now, uh, what other uh, demands are being uh, put forward now? I believe you are asking for more teeth. Uh, right. Uh, uh, at the moment, uh, what we find is uh, uh, maybe that in the uh, days to come, uh, those improvements uh, take place. For example, uh, though we have uh, the, uh, so far as the criminal issues are concerned, criminal contempt, like, like we have section 19, but the civil contempt is not available with the EFT. Okay. With the result, uh, they are not uh, able to enforce their decision. And uh, unfortunately, most of the, these decisions, uh, you know, uh, pertain to the MOD. And uh, with the result, we find that more than 80 percent uh, cases are just lying, uh, though the orders by the EFTs have been given and in the favor of uh, the petitioner, the applicant, but yet uh, implementation is not being done. Neither they are going to the Supreme Court against the uh, order of the EFT, nor they are uh, implementing, especially that the stability pension. So, so if the AFTs are put under the law ministry, Ji. this issue will be resolved, you think? I am sure, uh, because uh, these days what we find the nodal agency is the MOD. Okay. And uh, the AFTs are dependent on the uh, Ministry of Defense for all the infrastructure, for all the, even the appointment uh, to a major extent, they have a big say for the appointment of these members. And uh, they are dependent on the MOD for uh, everything almost. But uh, since you are also practicing and you are appearing for the AFT, are yeah. you generally satisfied with the way the AFTs uh, function? Uh, I am uh, quite uh, satisfied, sir. Uh, for the last uh, almost three, four years, we have seen the kind of clearance that they are giving. For, uh, to illustrate uh, my point, there was a case which got transferred, case okay. of one major Kuldeep Singh. And uh, it took 16 years. It was lying pending in the High Court here in Chandigarh. It got transferred on the first date of hearing itself, it got decided. And uh, where the, uh, the, the officer had uh, given a statement also on this thing, he, he, th he said uh, he never hoped that he would get, ever get relief uh, in his lifetime. So likewise, we find the applicants, the petitioner are getting uh, relief. And uh, I am told that uh, uh, within a year or so, they are disposing of as many as uh, 1,500 to But what about the, 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 the uh, serving officers or retired officers who are nominated? who are put on the AFT, do they have adequate legal uh, uh, experience? Uh, I would, uh, so far as the comp composition of uh, Section 5, uh, there, is a, there is a lot of problem. Okay. And uh, because uh, I, probably they have not uh, applied their mind properly to this thing, they should have at least see the, seen the developed system 
like the USA and all that. I've had the privilege uh, of doing a couple of courses in the U USA. Okay. And uh, there they pick up people with uh, from the army and with at least uh, a basic qualification of a law degree. Okay. Here, unfortunately, that kind of uh, input, uh, we see cases, the un it is a very, very unfortunate that uh, that contribution, especially the court martial. Now, they do not know uh, what the uh, issues, especially connected with laws uh, or issues uh, of law as well as mixed issues of so, law. So, fact. the members need to be better informed on the legal issues. I would say that uh, they should be at least, they must be having, they must have uh, legal uh, knowledge, the basic legal, legal knowledge. They must have basic uh, legal otherwise knowledge. Otherwise, they yes, are not. Sudhir Singh, you want to say something? I say this, that here is a officer who's got 35 to 37 years of service. Right. He's a lieutenant general and major general, but mostly they're lieutenant generals right. now. No, these are the people who have done their staff colleges, who've done all, and law is part of it. We appear exams. Basically, we have been handling these as a major general, as a brigadier, warrant A, warrant B, means all the paths of legal are understood. Evidence Act, IPC, everything is but, but on. But the Jan basic knowledge exists. You could be a jack of all trades, but no. I don't think you have that no, kind of mastery I, I, that is required. I'm coming, no? I'm coming to okay. different issues. No, oh. I'm uh, cover, I agree with you, but I'm coming to different issue. You see, these AFTs were made, constituted only for two things. One, economical, most economical, and quick justice. Okay. Look what has happened. Yeah, AFTs, that, that no, 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 AFTs. Point is, mera katil hi mera munsif hai, mere haak mein kya faisla dega. Same MOD ke against to wo ja raha hai. Right. The gentleman is going against that point. And then he is not implementing Im it. Implementation So also. who will implement? Then the chap has to go to Supreme Court. Just imagine a widow. His, her case is to be decided. No, where will she go? Can she yeah, hire? There, there may, are issues. May, yes, may, Sir General Bari, you want to say I, yes. I want to mention, you're talking about the qualification of... Uh, soldiers for EFT, taking up yes. this job. I have appeared for a case in the CCI or the Consumer Commission. Right. There are IS officers there. What uh, stops, knowledge uh, do they have? What, what stops the it uh, is the general to high be part of administrative? It is the High Court so judge there who I would like to little does bit all the on that issue. legal work okay. and he is only an administrative member. A member. He's giving his logic of service. Yeah. The service thing, he's clarifying the yeah. judge. May I add, sir? Yes. Uh, like, uh, let us say that there is an issue of uh, some court martial involved, let's say a murder trial. Now the case comes up in appeal here. And then they have to see the ingredients of the charge of murder. Now, unfortunately, uh, whether my friend uh, agree with my, uh, my point of view or, or otherwise, uh, they, they have inherent uh, handicap in appreciating the probative value of evidence. So to anyway, that I, think, I think we are basically deviating from the basic, basic point. Yeah. But General Bari, uh, there is also the issue of uh, health care. What is the situation as far as the exercise is concerned now and what are you demanding? Well, L ECHS was a very good scheme when it started. Right. But unfortunately, it has been stymied by the government. First of all, they're not giving adequate money. Compared to another sister scheme called CGHS for right. civil servants. Where they're getting 10,000 rupees, we're getting, I think, about 3,050 3, 3, per, per beneficiary. Per beneficiary but, per but year. But is it fair to compare the two, no. Jal Bari? Why, why you want to compare it? Look at this budget. Okay. Our budget is 1,600 crores. Okay. And we have 499 ECHS clinics. Then these people have to go to various places throughout the country in the interior where the cost should be much more. Then 10,500 per beneficiary, but you are giving 3,000. What, what is the consequence? 80% and above hospitals which had impaneled could super have withdrawn. Why? Because the money is not money is Second wrong. point, the medicines are today, 54 medicines which are dire need, heart and uh, cancer, and other people, diabetics. Are but, not but, but Jal Sadbisi, let me tell you, there's also a feeling that some of this facility was being misused. Otherwise, how would, uh, well, you know, well, if, if, if an old uh, soldier at the age of 80 or 85 was to get the knees replaced and on the other side in the civil, people as young as 40 or 45 can't get their knees Kamaji, replaced. Kamaji, if how a good MLA, is that? Really? If a MLA or MP okay. with five years one can be flown to USA to get his treatment, I am sure this soldier who has given, I am telling you today, I have had seven operations in my service time. It is, I am not the same Satbir Singh born from the parents at that time. I, I cut pieces. Okay. If that is what has happened to my boy at 15, 17 years, you have to squeezed everything out of him. And when he needs his care, at least give him the best medical care. It was promised to us. 
Right. Jalpani, there are some lingering issues of the sixth pay commission relating to the emoluments. I think uh, you are demanding that uh, these be implemented from 2006 and the, as of now they are being implemented from 2012. Uh, what kind of a disparity is there? I, I'll give you an instance that when Six Pay Commission was uh, sanctioned, right. Army Instruction 2S of 08 was published. That is sec Army Instruction 2 Special of 2008. Okay. Now in that, the pensions of Lieutenant Colonels to Lieutenant Generals were clubbed within 2,000 rupees. Okay. The only difference between the pensions of the, all the ranks was the difference in the grade pay. Whereas Army Instruction 2S of 08 had very clearly given each rank's pay from so-and-so to so-and-so, another rank from so-and-so to so-and-so. But the government in its wisdom brought everyone down to the lowest pension. Uh, the bureaucrats, sir, not bu the government. Well, the government of the bureaucrats. Mm -hmm to 37,000 rupees and only gave the difference in the grade pay as the difference between ranks. With the result, now a brigadier, a major is going to get about 4,000 rupees extra pension. They did it for lieutenant generals because if they did it in right. 2008 itself. I, as a lieutenant general, my pension was increased from 27,000 something to 36,000 straight away. Okay. But for the others, they got left behind only because this was to benefit the civil servants, the IS people, that everyone retires minimum additional secretary or secretary. So additional secretary and secretary looked after HAG grade was specially no, created. No, tell, tell me, uh, General Bari, how are you collectively planning to take up these issues with the government? We've taken up, we won the case, but implementation is not being done. That is so, the so Jalsa, what are you, what are you, since yeah, you're running out of time, what are you doing to uh, get this implemented now? Well, we have gone to the government. Okay. We will go to the courts. We'll go to the people. We'll fight elections. We will take part in governance. We will tell, go to the whole country and we'll build up youth, which is with us. Other, other people with us, IITNs, IAMs, all the movements, they are really very much concerned doctors. about the soldiers, the doctors. But when you, when you go about talking to other ex-servicemen organizations, what kind of a response are you getting uh, uh, nationwide? Good response, what we are saying is common minimum program, okay. which now has been agreed upon. Almost everybody in the country wants these 10 points. Okay. That is the health care, the one rank, one pension, separate pay commission, elect, uh, separate uh, commission for the ex-servicemen, and uh, NFU for the serving people, third career progression, these are 10 so, points. So, which so we do are, we take it that you're preparing yourself for the, the coming elections next year? Also, but our yeah. aim is we are, don't want to actually go in for that. Our aim is to create environment in the democracy so that a soldier can live with dignity and respect. If the government, the political parties can give it to us, we have no business to go in for any you know, taking part. But, but when they drive but, us... But is there a danger that this could even affect the, the serving soldiers? In fact, no, for what? No, they are, they, they are, everyone is conscious of, they, aren't they seeing the TV, television? They don't know. If they have to vote, they have to be conscious of what is happening in the country. Yes, General Barry, last word for you. Well, I'd like to say that we don't want to take too drastic an action. We've been trying to write to people. We've been writing to the defense minister, the f finance minister, the law minister. I've even written to the president. But we don't get a response. So we not, don't even not, even a, not even a reply? Not even an acknowledgement. Somebody, somebody in the, some bureaucrats has said that if I give finance to over my dead body, is this the word used? Okay. Right. Since you run out of time, thank you very much for joining us thank in the discussion. Thank you very much. Financial constraints of the government notwithstanding, those demands of the soldiers which only require a will to do and have little or no financial implication should be implemented immediately. Since the soldiers are a nation's pride and also the last resort, their interests and those of their families should be of paramount importance. That is all in Defence Line today. Do write your feedback. Good luck and goodbye. खबरों की दुनिया में आइए हमारे साथ कहीं भी और कभी भी जुड़िए हम मिलेंगे Facebook पर हम दिखेंगे YouTube पर हमें follow कीजिए Twitter पर खबरों के साथ बने रहिए रात दिन